guys, so I just got settled in. Uh, this evening, it's a really, really hot day. <clears throat> They're projecting for uh, November, especially early November, to be really, really warm. It was a high of 70 today, and it's about 60 right now. But as soon as I got in the stand, I saw a doe right below me. I couldn't really move, didn't have anything set up. And I'm self-filming, as you can see behind me. Hunter's not here. But then I looked down in the bottom of this field, and there's a big eight-pointer we have. don't even have him on camera. And I got him filmed a little bit, clear down there, grunted at him just in case I needed a better look. If he came up here, he decided not to. And he went into this timber so he could still come over uh, over the hill right here. It's about a 35-yard shot on this trail. And it's basically a transition over from bedding to bedding right here. guys well that wraps up tonight I had a really really good night saw that eight pointer that I, I was talking about earlier right now there's deer running and does around in the field I can't even tell what they are but uh, I had a really really a three or four year old good ten pointer <laughs> I'm guessing I don't know 150s uh, chasing a doe around in the field forever and that's why I think all these other deer are doing is trying to get that doe and then after that, I saw just a glimpse of of a really nice deer. Can't even tell how big, I don't know. I think he was about a 45, 150, nine or 10 pointer. Guys, well, that was the first time that I've seen that buck in person. That's a deer that we call Lucky, and we're pretty sure he's a four-year-old, and uh, we have probably the most pictures of him of any deer, and this is the spot that he's always at. We've got him here four days in a row before. Um, I rattled, I didn't film it, but I rattled right away in the morning, and he come in looking didn't see anything he got to 50 yards uh, minimum and right behind him a bigger bodied dark looking I'm pretty sure he was an old buck came in I think he was coming to the rattling too and Lucky goes walking back down there and they both bristle up and uh, the older one kind of runs him off a little bit and then they both just go their separate ways so I probably would have shot that one I'd never seen that deer either right now I'm just trying to shoot an old deer can get a deer that's running our younger bucks off that's not really gonna end up being something all right guys it's December 1st and it is a cold one 19 degrees this morning and I'm in the furthest stand that we have it's over three quarters of a mile very first time I've sat it all year. My dad shot uh, Mr. Wide out of the stand last year. Really wide, really good uh, 160. Um, it's dead quiet the whole way. I have to walk through tall grass and it felt like a Mack truck walking through. But I got in here without scaring anything somehow and it's barely, barely a south, southeast wind which is really borderline. But I knew I had to get all the way down in here into these bottoms.
See if I can hold the camera steady enough. I'm shaking still. <sighs> this late in the season, I didn't care what his rack looked like. If it was old, it was going down. And that that buck is not have a big rack at all, but he is a huge body. And hopefully, with him being out of here in the next year. Something with the bigger rack will move in. Oh man, I heard him up there for probably 15 minutes running them, running two does around, grunting. I saw a littler uh, eight pointer up there too. And then they come running down here and he comes and oh my gosh, he had a toad of a body and he just stood there and I, I. I think I drew back and I think I held it back for like three, four minutes. I just couldn't decide. I was making sure he was old. He was staring right at me. And I determined, yeah, he's a big old boy. So I think I made a good shot. I'm gonna give him a little bit of time. And then I'm gonna head up there and look. All right, I just got down and I went over to where I shot him and there's already good blood. I know it didn't go through to the other side right now. He's right now he's bleeding out one side right now pretty good. So hopefully he's just dead up here in this field. We'll see. I went a little further and right here's my arrow. Did, didn't even break off. Looks like about halfway. Yeah, looks like it went about halfway in. So that's good. All right, well, I was tracking him uh, in this tall grass and he's bleeding a lot all up and down the sides of these weeds and get right out in the middle of this field and he's right there. I don't have a camera guy or somebody to hold the camera or anything to put the camera on out here in the middle of this field, so. I have to hold him and the camera at the same time, but he's a toad. I made sure he was a toad before I shot him. I didn't want to accidentally shoot a younger deer. There's just something about old deer. Seeing him get to this age and then being able to outsmart him and harvest them. It's been a rough season. Hopefully the muzzleloader is better for us. And we start getting some good bucks down on film. But if you're watching this, we'll see you in late muzzleloader.